Telegram video suggests that there are 400 mobilized Russians who were abandoned in a forest for six days and forced to fend for themselves, no food, no medical exams, and armed with decommissioned weapons. They say they're protesting now, not going anywhere. So the story sounds unbelievable. Russian draftees were simply left on their own at a train station in Belgorod Oblast. This is on the border with Ukraine without being subordinated, subordinated to any military unit. They say that they were given full gear and live ammunition and absolutely zero training. Let's watch the video, I'll translate. Okay, let's turn it down a bit. We are currently in Belgorod Oblast. There are around 50 of us with weapons. But at the same time, we are not subordinated to any military unit. Throughout a week, we were living in harsh conditions, extremely harsh. There were no logistical support, absolutely nothing. Now, it's also not known who and where is going to which unit we are attached. Weapons and hands, but these are not even attributed to us. Not a single AKM is attributed to our military IDs. This is Article 222 of the Criminal Code of Russia. Officers treated us like animals. Nobody cares about us. There wasn't any training. We are eating things that we only buy ourselves. We've lost huge amounts of money just to have something to eat. Not to mention ammunition. Here. They have given us combat set. Live ammunition. These were found in the unit. Simply found on the street, in the unit. So here's the first video. Now let me play you a second video that is also going around that I wanted to, that I posted that is of the same of the same vibe. Telegram video suggests that there are 400 mobilized Russians who were abandoned in a forest for six days and forced to fend for themselves, no food, no medical exams, and armed with decommissioned weapons. They say they're protesting now, not going anywhere. So I can't play you the video because, you know, Russian, no translations, yada, yada, yada. Basically, what this would mean, and I've already talked to you guys about this before, is that Russian mobilization doesn't seem to be going very well, not very swimmingly. If you can just have men abandoned on the Ukrainian border in Belgorod Oblast with live ammunition, zero training, and, and just no orders to do anything, they're not even like attributed to anything, they're just left there with no guidance in the world, they could just go off and start doing stalker role play in the fucking woods if they wanted to. That's not how you mobilize properly. I mean, we talked about before how Russian mobilization hasn't happened in, 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 since like what? The Second World War? We haven't had something like this happen on, on this scale in a very, very, very long time. Well, definitely on this scale. And so there was a lot of questions on whether they were gonna be able to manage it. Not only because they haven't done something like this in forever, but also because a lot of their paperwork is outdated and that's led to a lot of people in their 50s and 60s being called up. People who served in like the 70s and shit and 80s being called up to serve under the Soviet military they served and they're being called up to, to serve in the Russian military today. Old Soviet officers being called up who can and sometimes barely, uh, barely walk around even. I mean, there was also questions of like, well, you know, Russia is also an incredibly corrupt country and they haven't been able to, you know, mount a good uh, logistical war so far. And so if when you can combine the, the inefficiency of Russian logistics when the with the corruption of the Russian military, it's not that surprising when we're getting reports of just 1.5 million Russian winter uniforms that they need desperately right now as their soldiers are freezing on the front line just disappear. They just disappear. They just whoosh, they just vanish. They just vanish. As we've seen these soldiers, as they talk about in this video, they have to go out and buy their own medical supplies. They got to go out and buy their own food. They got to go out and buy their own gear. 
because they don't have enough medical gauze and medical bandages for all these soldiers. In some instances, we've seen footage coming out of them saying, hey, you need to go buy out buy your own medical gauze. Soldiers respond. We looked all locally um, and there's none available. By the way, they shouldn't be even having to buy their own medical supplies in the first place. The military should provide it to them. That is ridiculous that they're being asked to buy their own medical supplies. This type of stuff does not happen in modern, uh, effective, uh, you know, winning militaries. This isn't a winning strategy. This is not something you see modern militaries do. And the response to the man saying, we can't buy them locally, there's none available anymore, they're all sold out, is use tampons. Use tampons. Um, I don't know if I have to tell you guys that that type of stuff does not stop bleeding very well. Uh, the amount of blood that will gush out when you get shot compared to the amount of blood that you'll gush out when you have your period is not comparable. And the amount of, of packing you're going to have to do to stop the bleeding would be immense with something like a tampon. And it's going to lead to more people dying if you're using that type of medical equipment with a bunch of untrained soldiers. It's already difficult enough to train your, train your military force on how to properly treat a wound. And now you're trying to make them do it with half-baked equipment that was never meant for this purpose. Anyway, this is just another example of how Russian mobilization is not going too well. This is at the same time Shoigu says that they've already deployed 200,000 conscripts in Russia uh, in Ukraine on top of the soldiers they already had. Do you guys feel it? Do you guys feel the 200,000 soldiers in, in Ukraine right now, the 200,000 extra manpower? Do you feel it on the front line? The Ukrainian soldiers don't. Do you see it anywhere on media, like massive uh, holes being plugged and, and the soldiers pushing back and, and holding? I don't see it. Satovi seems set to fall in the near future as the Ukrainian army pushes further across the Oskil River. Where are those 200,000 troops? What are they doing? And because there's like two outcomes with that. A, Shoigu is lying and he's lying to cover up with how bad mobilization is going. Or B, they do have 200,000 troops and they're just that ineffective because they haven't been properly trained, haven't been properly equipped. And this is a massive mess and mobilization's uh, not going too well. Either way, good for us, bad for them. Now, there is an alternative I need to tell you about, a rumor that I've heard. So there seems to be a lot of infighting between the Wagner Group and the Russian military. The Wagner Group doesn't like Shoigu very much, the guy we were just talking about, the, he's the Minister of Defense for the Russian Federation. And there's rumors that they kind of want to see the guy out of there. And then see a new guy appointed who will, who will serve Wagner's interest more. Wagner being the private military company that's been accused of many war crimes, not only in Ukraine, but in places like Central Africa and other parts of the world as well. They also was founded by a neo-Nazi. So there's a rumor that this video, now this is just a rumor, just a rumor. It's, there's no evidence of it yet that I know of. There's a rumor that these guys are actually Wagner Group soldiers dressed up as Russian conscripts pretending to have been stranded here with nothing, completely just abandoned, in order to make the Russian military look bad, make Shoigu's mobilization look bad, and apply pressure to Shoigu and the Russian government. If that was true, that would be a chaotic and massive level of infighting that is actively undermining the Russian war effort and making Russia look worse. That would be absolutely massive if we were able to ever get confirmation on something like this. And see, here it is right here. Mark Krutov talking about it. The video was posted on, on and being reported by pro Wagner channels, which matches Prague's fire Shoigu narrative. This is the guy who's basically going to all these uh, prisons recruiting for Wagner. If you don't know this, a Wagner is recruiting a lot of rapists and murderers and other criminals from prisons, and they'll be able to basically get rid of their sentences if they go to Ukraine and fight, because again, Russia is so desperate for manpower. That is totally what a nation that's winning a war would do when they're the invading force. Uh, and he doesn't like Shoigu that much. He wants him gone. And so what uh, what's being talked about is that, that he set up this video or his, his people set up this video to make Shoigu look bad because they want to get rid of Shoigu. Also, some Wagner patches are visible on it. Nearly all poor mob kicks on the video wear balaclavas. 
I think patches are just kind of Progan's Easter egg here. The guy also makes a weird claim that they've all, he says 500 people got COVID on that train. Here's Rybor's video with the Wagner patches filmed at the same location. Белгородской области. Нас в районе 500 человек. It's very strange. Russian MOD makes ridiculous claim that these guys headed to Muluno for training. If they departed from Moscow to Belgorod and then for training in Muluno, their route would look like this. So the the Russia Russia responds to this in a in a fucking nonsensical manner. Why would you go from Moscow to Belgorod then back in the other direction? This is fucking ridiculous. Obviously that didn't happen. This is a lie. Either Russia abandoned these soldiers in Belgorod with no plan and is now only doing something because it got called out online and it got attention and the Wagner people were making a stir about it. Uh, the pro-war people were making a stir about it. And so, you know, Moscow is trying to be like, oh shit, uh, cook up a narrative and this is what they could come out with. That's the one case, which by the way, if they cover this up or come up with an explanation for this, that doesn't mean there isn't other instances like this happening. Again, there's been other reported instances of this all across the country of stuff like this happening. This is just one of the more egregious examples. Just because they cover up this doesn't mean that all the other examples aren't happening. Where there's smoke, there is fire. Just because they try to cover up the smoke in this instance doesn't mean there isn't fire across the whole country of Russia outside of the actual fire in Moscow now from Molotovs being thrown at cars. So this is ridiculous. So in one instance, they're using this to cover up them fucking up. Or, and this is the interesting thing, this is the interesting proposal, guys, in all you chatters. Everybody, listen closely to this one. Listen closely to this proposal, okay? Everybody, every, all my peepos in chat, okay? Listen closely. Or, the Wagner Group did this to humiliate Moscow to forward this narrative of firing Shoigu and how the mobilization's going bad. Moscow knows this is the case but can't call them out because that would be an admission of infighting. So they just cover up Wagner's mess and their attempt to make them look bad and just says, hey, they were being moved for training. Meaning that Moscow, due to the fact that this would make them look absolutely terrible, either way, whether they did it themselves or if this was Wagner trying to make them look terrible, they can't do shit. Because if they say this was Wagner trying to humiliate us, then that sets the world infighting, 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 cracks in Russian society, cracks in Russian military command, cracks in the Russian military, the infighting. And this is the same time where their military is being pushed back and their mobilization is going terribly. There's no way they're going to admit to that publicly, even if this was a lie by the Wagner group, a stunt done by them to make the Russian military look bad. And so the best they could conjure up is, oh, we were moving them to training in this ridiculous path that's very obviously a lie. Because if they admit that it was the Wagner group doing this, they honestly look weaker than if they just fucked up. Man, isn't that interesting? Isn't that an interesting theory? Isn't that interesting? God, man. There's still plenty to investigate. I leave some space for it's all real theory. Just shared my concern. Just noticed one more Wagner associated patch on one of the men in Bali Clavas. After watching this video for several times, I can see the group of eight to 10 people hiding their faces and better equipment than others. God, what an interesting, interesting story. And so I just wanted to bring that to your attention because either this is just another example of, of mobilization going terribly, absolutely terribly, or this is an instance of Russian infighting. Either is absolutely fantastic for us. Either would be absolutely wonderful.